Hello and welcome to the UNSCAP online course for negotiating regional trade agreements for trade in times of crisis and pandemic. My name is Katrin Kuhlman and I am a visiting professor of law at Georgetown University Law Center and the president and founder of the New Markets Lab, a law and development center. This is module six on intellectual property rights. In a global health crisis, such as the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, intellectual property rights, or IPRs, are critical. They can either prevent access to essential medicines, vaccines, and equipment, or they can form part of the solution by encouraging fast and efficient innovation and access. There is a public interest dimension of ensuring the balance between the rights of innovators and access to the products of innovation needed in times of crisis or emergency. And this chapter of the handbook focuses on just this balance. IPRs have a direct link to various sustainable development goals, including SDG 9 on fostering innovation and SDG 3 on good health and well being, specifically, Target 3B on supporting research and development of vaccines and medicines and providing access to affordable essential medicines and vaccines in accordance with the Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health. In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, many countries adopted a range of IP-related measures as part of their crisis management strategy. Procedural measures, use of compulsory licenses, and the creation of e-filing mechanisms all allowed countries to use IPR in their crisis mitigation efforts. For example, Canada introduced a bill to modify its Patent Act to allow the Commissioner of Patents to permit the government or an authorized person to supply a patented invention to respond to a public health emergency with due safeguards to protect patent holders. The Russian Federation used compulsory licenses of some medicines. And at the multilateral level, the, the WTO Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights, or the TRIPS Agreement for short, sets out minimum standards for the protection of covered IPRs and is the most comprehensive multilateral treaty on IPR protection. Recent RTAs are expanding upon TRIPS to establish TRIPS plus IPR protections as well. So first, the legal foundations of intellectual property rights. The WTO TRIPS agreement is based on MFN and national treatment principles with three main features. One, it includes minimum standards for covered intellectual property rights, which must be protected by WTO members. Second, it includes principles governing domestic enforcement procedures for IPRs. And third, it provides that disputes under the TRIPS agreement are subject to the WTO's dispute settlement mechanisms. It also includes special and differential treatment in the form of transition periods to address the needs of developing countries. While many of these transition periods have expired, LDCs still have until 2021 to align with the TRIPS Agreement and until 2033 on patents. The TRIPS Agreement recognizes the need to balance the rights of creators or IPR holders with the users of technological knowledge, as well as the need to enforce IPR in a manner that promotes social and economic welfare. It does address access to medicines and WTO members may adopt measures necessary to protect public health and nutrition and to promote public interests, according to Article 8 of the TRIPS Agreement. Article 31 of the TRIPS Agreement includes compulsory licensing provisions that allow countries to authorize the production of patented products or processes without the patent holder's consent in specific circumstances. This compulsory licensing provision was expanded under Article 31 bis, which is the only amendment to the WTO agreements, after WTO members realized that the compulsory licensing mechanism was not going to be sufficient to ensure access to vital pharmaceuticals for countries that lack sufficient manufacturing capacity. So in 2003, under the Doha Declaration, members agreed to waive the requirement that compulsory licenses be issued for products intended predominantly for local markets. This is also referred to as Paragraph 6, the Paragraph 6 Agreement. So regional trade agreements also cover intellectual property rights. And as a general pattern, there's been a proliferation of IPR provisions and RTAs, which often contain TRIPS plus commitments. 70% of the RTAs notified to the WTO and enforced as of 2014 contain IPR provisions, 
and 90% of the more recent RTAs concluded after 2009 contain IPR chapters. The most common IPR provisions include patents, copyrights, trademarks, and geographical indications. Mark Wu identified four geographic hubs that have driven integration of deeper IP-related obligations in RTAs, the US, the EU, the EFTA, and a set of advanced countries in the Asia-Pacific region. The US template seeks TRIPS plus IPR commitments for patents, copyrights, and trademarks, along with more stringent domestic enforcement requirements. The EU model requires TRIPS plus IPR provisions, but pushes for greater protection of geographical indications than the US does. The EFTA model imposes higher standards for IPR protection, but has a more limited focus on copyright, along with the adoption of some developing country priorities. And then the advanced Asia-Pacific economies provide a different approach to IPR commitments, but there's a greater variation in how they approach TRIPS Plus commitments. The relationship between innovation and crisis management during the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to light a number of aspects of IPR protection, which will be the focus of this presentation and the chapter in the handbook. These are TRIPS Plus provisions related to pharmaceuticals, compulsory licensing, and alternative incentive models. TRIPS is used as the baseline for most of these options. However, for alternative incentive models, there is currently no baseline available multilaterally or regionally. TRIPS plus provisions on pharmaceuticals relate to things like patent linkages, patent term extensions, expanded definitions of patentability, and protection for undisclosed test data and biologics. Many RTAs affirm the compulsory licensing system set out in TRIPS, which will be discussed in a, in a following slide. The handbook uses the example of undisclosed data protection to illustrate TRIPS plus provisions. Some common TRIPS plus provisions found in RTAs are provided as discretionary options, which while they may enhance IP protection, they may also adversely affect access to vital pharmaceuticals. So the slide has three options. One is TRIPS Article 39, which sets out minimum standards for protection of undisclosed test data. Discretion, discretionary option A is taken from the EFTA Korea Free Trade Agreement, which allows for the use of test data in lieu of adequate compensation. The discretionary option B taken from the USMCA sets out a fixed term for protection of test data. A fixed term of protection could lead to challenges for stakeholders and trading partners during time of emergency. And compensation, in the case of discretionary option B, could be a hurdle to access test data. So here is an example of a provision on undisclosed test data protection. This is discretionary option A on compensation for undisclosed information. The parties shall protect undisclosed information in accordance with Article 39 of the TRIPS Agreement, which again was the baseline on which we operated. The parties shall prevent applicants from marketing approval for pharmaceuticals and agricultural chemical products from relying on undisclosed tests or other undisclosed data, the origination of which involves a considerable effort submitted by the first applicant to the competent authority for marketing approval for pharmaceuticals and agricultural chemical products, utilizing new chemical entities for an adequate number of years from the date of approval, except where approval is sought for original products. Any party may instead allow in their national legislation applicants to rely on such data if the first applicant is adequately compensated. We'll turn next to RTA options for compulsory licensing. The compulsory licensing mechanism is a significant flexibility of the TRIPS Agreement, enhanced by the Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement and Public Health. It has been a way to improve developing country and LDC access to vital pharmaceuticals. However, a number of stakeholders have argued that the mechanism needs a serious revamp. Challenges note, noted include the following, cumbersome and costly procedural requirements, the flexibilities included under the compulsory licensing mechanism under TRIPS Article 31 and TRIPS Article 31 BIS are notoriously difficult to use. Notification is required of both the importing and exporting parties to the TRIPS Council. Generics may be produced under a compulsory license only in such quantities as required to meet the needs of the importing member, and all amounts produced under the mechanism have to be sent to the importing member. In the case of Article 31 BIS, importing members also have to show 
insufficient or no manufacturing capacity to produce the required product. Now, recently, another proposal has been put on the table. India and South Africa have proposed to waive certain provisions of the TRIPS agreement concerning a number of IPRs, copyrights, patents, industrial design, and trade secrets. And this was done specifically in response to the pandemic. The proposal has been supported by 75% of the WTO membership. Proponents for the IPR waiver argue that IPR protections impede the ability of countries to access low-cost pharmaceuticals and other essential products. Critics of the waiver highlight the importance of strong IPR provisions in stimulating innovation, maintaining that a waiver could discourage future research and development. To a large extent, future reform at the multilateral level will be needed to pave the way for newer RTA options. However, the handbook does include options related to compulsory licensing as included here. The baseline option is taken from TRIPS Article 31 bis, which establishes the multilateral framework for issuing compulsory licenses for export. Baseline option B is an RTA baseline taken from the EU Vietnam FTA, which expressly recognizes the importance of the Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement in Public Health and entitles parties to rely upon it, and paragraph 6 in particular, which aligns with the TRIPS Agreement Article 31 bis. And then the discretionary option, which is included here in its entirety, is taken from the RCEP, Article 11.8, which also reaffirms the Doha Declaration on the TRIPS Agreement in Public Health, and affirms the right to protect public health in line with SDG Target 3b that calls for application of TRIPS flexibilities to promote public health and access to medicines. And finally, the section on intellectual property rights in the handbook concludes with several RTA options for alternative incentive models. These options build on country expert and academic proposals to allow for greater cooperation between parties, focused on intellectual property pooling and the establishment of innovation prizes or grants. These are reflected here on the slide one is baseline plus option A, which is sample draft language. And this means that this is language that has not yet been included in an RTA, but could possibly be considered for future regional trade agreements. It's also baseline plus because it is meant to work with existing provisions and disciplines on intellectual property and not take their place. Baseline plus option A is based on a proposal by Costa Rica that was endorsed by the World Health Organization to allow parties to work together on a mechanism for pooling intellectual property rights in relation to the prevention, mitigation, or containment of a health crisis or emergency. Baseline plus option B, also reflected here in sample draft language, allows contracting parties to explore cooperative solutions to promote innovation, including through the establishment of financial incentives for the private sector, in the development of preventatives, therapeutics, or other technologies to deal with public health crisis or emergencies. This could also be included in future RTAs. To conclude this session on intellectual property rights, here are some illustrative sources that were referenced, and of course, more can be found in the handbook itself. Thank you so much and see you for the next module.